Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat, episode 390. And for this episode, I'm trying something I've never tried before on Matt Chat. Namely to play a game uh, with a developer, record it all live, and then uh, stream it here after the fact. Uh, it's it's pretty interesting uh, setup. I hope you guys enjoy it. Definitely something different than the normal Matt Chat. So uh, after you watch it, uh, let me know what you think about it in the comments. I'd love to uh, hear your thoughts on it. If you want to see more episodes like this, we'd probably do that. Uh, anyway, we've got a lot to cover, so without further ado, here is uh, me and uh, David Beatty playing Mega Wars. All right, folks, we are here with Mega Wars with David Beatty. He's on uh, joining me with Skype here, and hopefully this will all record properly and just be amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, he's going to be stepping me through a little bit of the uh, preliminary gameplay here, so we can see what all the fuss is about. All right. So let's go to a new game down there, and we're going to join a Mega Wars, because that way I can see and we can kind of play together. So doing okay. That'll ask you to sign into a Bronze War. Click on that. Give your ship a name. Oh, agree to the rules first. And we discovered earlier that you need to have it just be one word. That's right. No spaces. Please try another ship name. What? Somebody's taking that. You just uh, took the name. Oh, yeah. Okay. We'll just just give, give, give it a steel space. rat. <laughs> okay. Looks like that. Too. There we go. Okay, good. As long as yeah. I get to be some form of rat, I'm okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Space rat. Okay. Assume command of your ship. And let's see if this runs this time. All right. Okay, pick the first one on top up there. Um, basically, what, where do you want to build your ship? So we're going to build it in uh, the M19 region at star1.c. Entering orbit. All right. Okay. So there you are in orbit of the first planet. Now, this is an imperial base. You can see it's got uh, its own dark helmet, who is the, the leader of the imperial uh, people. And uh, that's um, who runs the galaxy at the moment. And you're, the point of Mega Wars is to gain enough population and votes to be able to become emperor and president of the, of the galaxy. So you're going to replace the Imperial with yourself. you got to make, them, make the galaxy great again. That's right. Make the galaxy <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. I didn't think about that, but yes, you're going to make the galaxy <laughs> great again. Okay, so let me give you a couple of pointers here real quick. Across the top up there, that's all your statistics about your ship, how powerful your lasers are, your shields, and all those kinds of things. That's all the way across the top. And that's the, the statistics that all the Mega Wars 3 players are used to seeing on the screen all the time. So we brought all that up, even though it's a bunch of numbers, everybody will get used to it. But uh, all that right across the top up there. Okay. You know, it's just a bunch of numbers to me at the moment, but I'm sure all will be. <laughs> all will be revealed. Okay. So if you uh, uh, pull the mouse down, uh, the center mouse, if you grab a hold of the center mouse button and you pull it straight down, it'll lock your ship back into the galactic grid. And now you can right click and you can fly north, south, east, or west. I know there's not north, south, east, or west. Oh. But that allows you to fly. Now, your ASDF keys, so you can turn the ship with your ASDF keys also. So you've got uh, yeah, the run, ability. Run into something here if I'm not careful? Or no. Actually, you're above. You're, you're above the system itself. So if you were to, to rotate around, you'd see you're actually above, flying above the planets and everything. So It's almost like there's three dimensions to this. Yes, there is. But we've kept it on a galactic grid. So... All oh, right. I see what you're saying, so you can kind of snap it back. Now, how do I stop? Okay, so double click, double right click will stop your ship. Mm -hmm. Double right click, mm -hmm. so that'll stop your ship. And so there you go. So you can say it snap back into the galactic grid. So All right. um, it's like hitting a little button on your you know, on your phone 
and uh, it uh, orients it back north again. I know it's not north, south, east, or west, but it's the way I think, okay? Um, and so um, Mega Wars is set up uh, on the the stars that you find are on a flat 2D plane. And we looked at making it all 3D, but it made it hard to find the stars. I don't know how else to explain it. So, oh, all right. Is that right, line so you have to walk between realism and <laughs> playability, right? Yeah, yeah, and and one of the things is if we added full three, you see the planets. We've we've done quite a bit of work to make some really cool planets. Yeah, that and is amazing. That's a little lava it's planet. Like fairly tropical. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a tropical <laughs> planet. Yes. Yeah. I'm guessing this so, is not a good spot for a, a colony, right? I would not colonize. Actually, let's talk about that real quick. If you look at the top of there, you'll see habitability on the left, and then the metal rating on the side. So habitability, I can't see it from here, is what, 6%? Yeah, 6.59. Okay. Anything below 15, you can't have it. I mean, it's not worth building on. And basically, how, what that works is 100 workers will build six houses in a year. Hmm. Does that make any sense? So if you find a 100-hab planet, a hundred workers will build a hundred houses in one year, which would allow another hundred colonists to come to your planet. So getting the highest habitability rating is huge because every three days your planet can double in size if you're building enough houses. So you can see how very quickly by the time you get and and in in uh, in Mega Wars 3, the text-based game, we saw some 400 million population planets, okay? Um, and so you can see over the four-week time period, you can grow a lot of voting power mm. to be able to get more votes than anybody else. And picking the best planets on reset night is the key to that. Okay, now... Let's let's leave this system and go to another one. So let's navigate it away. So right click towards the lower right hand corner down there, and you're gonna na you have to navigate outside the gravity well of the star, and just below where it says Enter Command, you'll see a button just popped up there at the bottom of the screen. And go to the right, and it'll say Enter Hyperspace. There you go. Okay. Boom. Now, if you look, there is another ship. And that's me sitting over here. Oh, we gotta so, go kill him. How do we? Yep, that's exactly right. No, we I'm want to make a colony. <laughs> yeah, let's uh, let's. But okay, so let me get out of range here so that your uh, your targeting computer. So your targeting computer is on, and you also notice. Okay, oh. so now your targeting computer is off, and I am still up there on your radar. So I'm going to double click and stop. So you can click on me up there, the little dot in the black radar. So you can click on me, and you can see I'm highlighted there. Hmm. Okay. Now there's a little checkbox on the lower bar, the little checkbox. That'll put you into what I want to call combat mode. And it'll switch your camera to put me in the center of your screen. So if you click on that, that should... Oh. I'm not. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now you can see it oriented your camera to always look at me, which really helps at combat. So if you go ahead and right click towards me, you will navigate towards me at this point. There you go. Now you'll see your ship starting to accelerate. Now coming head on to me is not the best strategy because I can fire pedos right down the line at you. So I would right click and start zigzagging. Just start to slightly zigzag. So you can see how my ship stays in the center of the screen up there. Mm. So it gives you some capability of spinning around and, and shooting at me, but I'm still your target. So if you went down and unclick the checkbox, the little check mark at the bottom down there, now you can see you're in normal combat mode, and you can see how difficult it would be to target me at this point. Now, you got to remember, back in the old days, you would actually type in that heading. You can see it. I'm about, um, about 150 gradients right there. Did you see? And now you can flip back and forth between the two modes. Okay? All right. So come back around. You've got me as target. 
Now you can see the red line. Mm -hmm. Press the control key and left click, and you'll fire a torpedo at me. You have torpedoes loaded. I can't see if you have them loaded. It's, you should have some torpedoes loaded. It says and torpedo it's, zero. Oh, you're out of torpedoes. Okay, so fire a missile at me. Let's see if you got missiles. Do you have missiles on board? Zero missile. Okay, so we need to establish a planet so that they can give you some weapons so that you can fight back. So I'm not going to shoot at you right away, but you get the idea. So all these little little white dots are stars you have not scouted yet. So let's click on one of the white dots there and tell it. And you'll see a little wheel, navigate. Go ahead and click it. Navigation in Mega Wars is automatic. You don't have to fly exactly. All you got to do is tell your ship to navigate, and it'll spin around and navigate you into that system. You might want to adjust your camera a little bit there, David. Uh. Oh, yep, sorry. <laughs> it's it's my eyes. I was trying to get close to see what you were doing. All right. What do we do now? Okay, so let's look at the planets here. Just hover over them real quick. You can also spin around with your mouse to be able to look at where the star is. And you can see each one of those has a gray above them, so those planets aren't any good. Not any good. So, okay, we need to yeah, get there's, system. Then. We need another system. So we'll go back into hyperspace again, So which is the third button. Go back to hyperspace and click on another system, and we'll keep scouting. Let me get out of your way so you don't have the... the um, there's yeah. a way we could be on the same team or whatever, though, right? Yeah, actually, we can join the same team. Now, that's one of the cool things about Mega Wars, is as you scout systems and I scout systems, you would get the scouting data as I scout the systems at the same time. And that way it saves you from scouting the whole universe by yourself because you're able to scout also. So let me see if I can give you... Looks like that was another bum system. Yeah, well, there's a lot of bum systems. There's It's, it's rare to find a really, really good one. So let me help you out. Entry system. Yeah, this one's still... So the red planets are the, the worst. So. Yep. Yep. Okay, so in enter command, we're going to go use a Mega Wars 3 command. Oh. Okay? Yeah. Oh, vintage. Okay. So, uh, vintage. So in the bottom box, click down there once. That'll give you the that'll give you the little cursor down there. Type nav n a v space m 19 and then a dot 192 Six, and then enter. There you go. Now, I already have scouted that system already, and I know that there's a 93 HAB planet there for you. So that's the advantage of being on a team. You'll come in, and you'll have a friend say, hey, you want to establish a planet? Go here, and he'll give you a location, and then you fly to that planet. Okay? Um, there's... Of five million stars in Mega Wars, so it's good to have friends. Oh, I see. So it's it's already got it highlighted there in yellow. Yep. It's headed there towards. I'm liking this interface quite a bit. It's very intuitive. Thank you. I appreciate that. I like the idea too. I was thinking about this earlier. How this is a third person game versus all the ones like uh, Elite, Dangerous, or X3. It's kind of nice well, being able to get this perspective on it. Well, here's the thing, okay? In Mega Wars, you're going to get into battles where there's going to be 30 or 40 ships. You want a tactical view. You can see now where the concept of being able to snap into the top view mm -hmm. would come in handy. Entry system. It's kind of All reminds right. me a little bit of Star Control. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so you have found the planet. I'm going to get up here close so I can see it. All right, so now you're in orbit of that planet. Right. Oops. I need to right click or left click? Left click. The there you go. There you go. Now you're in orbit. Oh, oh cool. That. Okay, so. <laughs> that looks so habitable. I would love to. <laughs> oh, I want to be there. Yeah. Actually, it's a cloudy planet. Okay, so, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's cloudy, but 
It's yeah, got free, some good metals. You get free and... shows every night. That's exactly okay. So at the bottom down the, of the screen down there, let's hover t hover over top of the planet that we're on. I think it's D. If uh, so, D? it would be yeah, yeah D. D. Yeah, so okay. click, and you'll see a little flag. Establish a base. New base established. All right, there you go. It is now yours. You now have uh, ten thousand colonists on that planet. Wow, it's that fast. That fast, yeah. Now you gotta remember, Mega Wars runs at one hundred and twenty to one. Okay, so for every uh, second that you play, it's two minutes of game time. God, these guys are already getting busy. Yeah, they're already working. <laughs> they're doing more than working. I think the population yeah. just jumped by a couple hundred. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> These are a little, little, hey, little, you know, the lightning storms. That's kind of inspiring some romance, right? Yes, that's right. Exactly. Yes, okay. So we'll go back, go back down to the bottom. We'll click on planet D again, just like we did just a second ago. Whoa. Now you're going to have some new options. And so we're going to go up to manage planet. And it's going to take a moment to load. Whoa. Okay. So this is what your colony now. Right now, colonies all look the same, okay? But we're going to expand that here very quickly so the, the the colony will look like your colony. So you got little cars and everybody's working in and that. Thing. So this is the colony and there's the mine and all of that. So left-hand side, the owner, that's you. And then you come down to the habitability and that kind of thing. How many, many houses are there? How many, many colonists? How many surf guns? Uh, all of that information is your base open or closed. So, so the surface guns that keep other people from coming in here and take on my planet. That's exactly right. But see, when you're offline, they attack your planets. Okay? Now, there's three areas of space. One is M at the center of the galaxy. No one can attack your planet, but the fire takes most of your income. Okay? So you end up having to pay for protection. Nice. Right? Bastards. Right? Oh, bastard. Um, then you move out of that to the rim. The rim, they only take about half of the taxes they would take, but your planet can't be from you. They can be bombed and the kind of thing. But you'll get score planets too. Then if you go out to the frontier all the way out, then those planets are yours. Those are completely yours. All the income is yours. But other players can steal those planets away from you. And surface guns and fighters and troop are there to protect your planet long enough for you to come online with your friends and kill the guys trying to take your planet from you. You with me? Is that? Yeah, so I guess I'm kind of notification that, hey, hey, they're in here trying to kill you. Okay. So, that, that's all. So, this planet here is, so, where is it on that scale? Um, actually, this is a pretty good planet. 93 HAB. So, every hundred workers are going to build 93 houses. Now, the best source is a hundred have the hundred metal. Okay, that is the best. Um, but this is a, a very good starter planet for you to get started out. So let's take a look at planet settings. You'll see on the left hand side there's a menu there. That's the settings. Who can visit your planet? Who can come into your shipyards and use your shipyards? That kind of thing. And then uh, the next one down on the left is labor settings. On the left, labor. Nice. This is so nuanced. It's just amazing. Oh, look good. Got all this. All right. Stuff. Yeah. Okay. Let's just kind of run through these real quick. Yes. Just want to give you a shotgun overview. Sick industry builds. It's construction. It is um, industrial construction. That makes sense. They build the equipment for your factories and have number of workers. Right now, we want this planet to grow as quickly as possible. Right. So let's put basic industry to zero. So go into the labor settings and put zero. Just click there once and type zero and hit enter. And then so all those people move down into construction. Down, see there, three up from the bottom, you'll see construction. Okay. So those workers now went to construction. So those workers will build new more houses for you. So 
mining. We'll back up. Mining. We mine. So we're gonna leave. Uh, we don't need any armaments right now. So we're gonna set him in zero because we're only looking for growth. We don't need any shipyards because we already have a ship right now. And then um, we have zero R in civilian factories. We need to make there's food, so we're not going to change that value. But right now, government is only going to provide us taxes. We don't want any government right now. We're just wanting to grow. So put zero in the government. Screw you, government. Okay. Now we have so anarchy on the planet. Now you have anarchy. <laughs> no, everybody's busy. They're working. So you need government when people aren't working. Okay, if everybody's working, they don't need government because they're too busy. They get it up, they work, and they go to sleep. There's no time to control. Funny, right? funny how that works, isn't it? <laughs> Let's get them all married and get babies. That's what we want. We want this place to grow. Uh, everybody is now in construction, and they're building houses for you. All right? So that's how the labor that's how the labor works and so you learn to fine tune labor and the and that man is the key because the number of people on the planet the score and your score determines where you place the universe um the end of the war okay so warehouse that is the other thing that can be built so we'll go ahead and look at that for just a second these are the things that you can build and and my torpedoes yeah yeah but see we're not building torpedoes but we're more interested in population okay so um you would go find the low hab planet and set him up to build you torpedoes hmm. because you're going to abandon him later <laughs> so, such a nice right? guy <laughs> Yeah, I don't need that planet. We'll get rid of it. Okay. So there's a lot to this. There are players that have played Mega Wars three years. And every time they play, they go, Oh, I didn't know that about planet management. I can do this. I can do that. So we provided those players with a lot of new things that they learn and grow on in the game itself. And that's one of the, the, the biggest advantages of resetting every weeks is you get to start fresh use your team get to find the best planets and then you try to work together as a team and in the game so if you go back to planet view there and that just removes all those menus and you can see the there's a little plant camera and there's a, a, a traffic camera now that does match your planet it's one of the, the little little minor things see we've done Make sure the game is playable and it is graphic perfect right now. And we will make it more graphically perfect as we move through the beta process. So let's go ahead and enter space up there. We'll hit that. And we've had some trouble, so we may have to re enter the game. We'll see. I want to nope. get into a little combat here. Yeah, let's do that. Let's get into some. Let's get into let's some. Get mixed combat. up with some combat. Oh, where'd my ship go? Yeah. Up, uh, yeah, that's what I was saying. We may have to close oh. out and come back. How do no. we zoom in on the ship there? No, he's he's. Just, oh, try going into yeah. Let's do this. Go into your dry dock. I found that this worked. Don't abandon your planet because we got them all set up. Go down to dry dock. Entering dry dock. And then uh, there's your ship. Give him just a second and did tell it to a. Uh, Exit. Actually, let's take a look at ship. On the left-hand side, you'll see it says Polax is your type of ship. Ah, oh, Polax, yeah. Okay, so you can change to the Cryon ship. So give him just a second. He'll come in from the top, and if he doesn't, we will be fine with that. Okay. All right, so we should be able to hit the exit now. That should turn our ship back on is what I'm hoping for. Entering orbit. And it did not. No. I think my ship appeared there. It was. Uh... Yep. Yep. The ship is is not there. So. I need to go to try that again. Yeah. Comes. All right. There it comes again. Okay. So hit the. Do I, I need we... to turn him into a cryon, or can I just go? Let's with... let's, let's let's try one of the other. Try the other ship type. The Raven. Yeah, the Raven. Let's go Raven and hit the purchase at the bottom. Maybe that's what was triggering. There yeah. we go. 
There we go. Here he comes. Give him just a second to get finish the animation. Okay, so now we hit the exit button. Yeah, let's hit the exit on top of the uh, right. Enter space. Opens up and flies on out. So entering. Forward. Hopefully, no, no, nope, it's a bug. All right, so you got to pause the recording and X and come in real quick. So you should just be able to close this one. Let me pause and I'll come back. Yep, go ahead. Really changes every time you enter the game. Okay, so now I'll go to new or continue. Continue. Hopefully, it should be listed, and it is good. Okay, so you'll just hit um, uh, set active up there on that war, and then assume command of your ship. There we go. Hit uh, uh, dot dot one up there. There you go. And that'll create Entry. you at the Imperial right. base. All right. There we Very go. Good. There we go. So I'll navigate over near one. And then we'll find a system we can fly into and do some combat. Now it's one. Oh, my guy's going somewhere. Yep. You're about 200 light years away, so it's going to take me a minute or two to get there. You move very fast in Mega Wars. So hopefully we'll be able to show how combat works in Mega Wars today. Yep. Which is what it's okay, all so about, you're gonna, obviously. So. You're going to need to navigate out of System 1, and we'll find a system close by. Okay, I've got one right here. So if you jump out, go out to, out of the uh, gravity well. Oh, here's some nice music. I don't know if that's yeah. coming through the stream or not, but it's... Uh, uh, yeah, I got it. Over here, in fact, I've got mine turned oh, off. Nice. Okay. So, yeah, thanks. Hit the hit the hyperspace button on right there by enter command. You'll see a little enter hyperspace. Engaging. Bam. Okay, so there I am. I'm there with you. We're here together. And there's a system right beside me called the M19556. So navigate into that system that's right beside me. Click on it, you'll get the start, get the nav, and then nav into that system. Okay. And I will meet you in there, and we will do some laser combat and learn how it all works. Laser tag time. Okay. Yeah. All right. And I've got... Oh, good. I've got torpedoes and missiles. I'm all set. <laughs> oh, I have a sharp stick. <laughs> you have a sharp stick. Actually, I can't. I don't see even yours. know if I have weapons. It says torpedo zero, missile zero. Okay, so um, how do I get some weapons? Let's get you some weapons here. We'll just see that system right there, seventy-two dot eighty-six M, the one that's uh, cyan. Go establish a base there. So just fly on over there. Up, oh, you have to click on the planet. There you go, and it'll say navigating the system. All right, so you're at planet B, I think it is. Yeah. Okay, so hover over planet B. Entering. There you go. So on the bottom, I can't move my mouse there. You want me to go to planet B? No, no, you're there. Go back. Go back. You're D. You're on planet D. Is it David? There we go. Okay, planet D. Here. Planet D. Okay, there we go. Okay, so click on it, and then it will give you the little flag in the bottom, in the bottom row down there. Little e. flag. Where is that? Should be showing a. Click, click on it. Click on it once. Establish a base. Good. Okay. New base established. There we go. Establish a base, and then it should list your base. Great. Okay, so. Yeah, on the bottom down there. In fact, I want to move that button over. On the bottom, click on it again, and then it'll give you a dry dock. Go into the dry dock. Enter dry dock. And then hit the exit up there twice. Just double click, and that should reload you. That's what Entering. I'm hoping for. Okay. Did it make your ship disappear? Well, I can still see it. Okay, we're, okay, yep, we're good. All right, you're way up there on the monitor up there. I don't have it bright, so. Do you have torpedoes and missiles in the upper left corner yet? 
in the upper left corner across the top bar. Upper left corner. No, it just says zero torpedo, zero missiles. Okay. All right. Well, I, we won't do any torpedo combat. We ha- we would have to build some, so we're okay. All right. So navigate away from the system, and then you will see me, Leaving. and you can click on my ship. If you zoom out, you can click on my ship, and then that will make me the current target. And then you have a lock button. So you want to lock your laser lasers on me. Oh, ah, yeah, yeah. And then you want to hit the fire button, and then that will fire your lasers. Oh, yeah. There you go. Very <laughs> yeah. good. Okay, now let's talk about lasers real quick. You have a, a weapon on the front and a weapon on the back. All right. So if I am behind you then only the back laser will fire. So go ahead, I think I'm behind you, so go ahead and fire the laser. Yeah, so you only got one laser hit. See right there? So what you want to do is navigate around to where you have both the front and the rear lasers locked on me at one time. Now, in top view, like you're in right now, it's difficult to do that. Yeah. In the bottom bar, there's a little checkbox. Now, we've got a new graphic coming. I just don't have it yet. So if you click on that, that will then lock the camera on me at that point. So no matter where I go, I'm going to stay in the center of your screen. So you can hold the middle mouse button and rotate around a little bit so it's a little more comfortable. There you go. You're stopped. You can see you have no flame coming out the back. So you can use the ASDF over on your keyboard. So if you hit W a couple of times, that'll give you some speed. There you go. Good. And you can turn. Oh, interesting. All right. So that allows you to turn and rotate. And you use the middle mouse button to, to, to change the tilt. So you can tilt me up. There you go. Put me about. There you go. All right. So I'm going to lock on you. Laser lock you should hear lasers locked on you. We ram each other. No, that's one thing that these are very, very far apart. It's not as close as you think they are. Right. So now you get into combat and we do a little dance until one of us is dead. <laughs> How do I fire my... You hit the little fire button down there on the bottom. There you go. There's also keyboard uh, shortcuts and I don't remember what they are right now. I think it's F1 or F2. Let me try F2. Two, one. Nope. Oh, you got me. Oh, you got me. Good. Dang it. Okay, I'm going to pay attention now. So I'm trying to point at you before I fire. Is that the goal here? Actually, you want the side. You the want side. It, you want your side oh, because you want both lasers. Like so you want broad both side. broadside. So, oh, I only hit you with my rear that time, and I got you on the back. Good. There. <laughs> oh, you got me. I heard a laugh. Killed me. Up. Dead. <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay, all right. So let me go rebuild it one and I will come back. Now that we kind of gave you the idea how combat's supposed to do, I'd zoom out just a little bit if I zoom so you're not so close to your ship. There you go. So now I want to go now, back to my planet and repair, right? Yeah, you want to go back to your planet and repair because I'm coming back for you. I'm not I'm not real happy about that, so I'm coming back. Entering, entering. Orbit. Okay, so I'm in orbit now. And then you would click on there and go to your dry dock. Dry dock. Entering. Dry dock. Yep. Now, will this automatically repair me, or do I need yep. to... Uh... Yep, it will automatically repair you automatically. Get repaired, come back out. Is it instantaneous repair? Yep. You just hit the exit up there. Should take you out. There you go. So this must be totally your creation. This, this style of combat, right? If the original was just a text game. Yeah. This is this is yep. This is all my creation at this point. So. So you created a star control like laser combat detected. style. Yep. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Lost. How kind of distance? So these lasers go. Long way. They, they will actually fire 40 AU, which is 40 times the distance from the Earth to the Sun. So the distances we're firing on are very, very far away. 
Um, and the, and we can go into why at another time because there's a lot of a lot of details in why. Let's see if I can get around here back in again. Ah, gotcha. Can't let you get away with just killing me so easily. <laughs> Yes. Okay, now the closer that you are, the 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 uh, more damage that you do. Now you'll notice your rear your rear end is taking a lot of damage. See right there on that right below the fire button, that dark blue bar. Yeah. Oh, that's the rear. Your that's your rear. So you have the cyan, which is your shields. Oh yeah, turn against me. That's good. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. There we go. Oh, gotcha. Got me. Okay, so now you'll pick your planet at the bottom right down there. The one at the bottom. Don't go to one of the Imperial bases. Go to that one. And then do an okay. And then that puts you right back into orbit again. Now, people have defended their bases against an onslaught of a bunch of players by rebuilding at your base immediately again. So you would just get right back into combat and just start blasting the ones who blasted you. So... Um, and now you can see my ship. I've, I took, I still had the damage that you left me with a little bit ago. So they will just defend their base until everybody's dead. Yeah, if your fire button is available, you're locked. Don't seem to be fire. There we go. There we go. Mazak, die! Okay, all right. So I'm going to move out, and I'm going to do a, a maneuver on you. And this is this is what you learn as you get larger and not larger, but as you play the game. I'm going to jump out. I'm going to launch a missile back in at you, and I'm going to re-enter the system. So now you've got two targets coming at you. You got a missile, and you got me coming at you. So you don't know if that missile is loaded, and that's one of the things that we do. Is missiles can have a huge load in them which would just blow, kill you instantly. It's almost an instant death at that point. But it could be a decoy. Or it could be empty. Oh, it got me again. Okay, so let me go build, come back. I didn't see the missile. Maybe it didn't fire. Oh, when you blew me up, you blew up all my missiles and torpedoes. Now I have to go back to my base and get them again. Forget it, I'm not gonna do that. Torpedoes and missiles, you have to buy, you have to build them at your bases, okay? So what I would have to do is fly back to one of my bases and pick up missiles and torpedoes and come back and shoot you with it at that point. So at this point, I only have in-system weapons. I can't feed uh, combat or have combat with you out in uh, hyperspace at this point. Hmm. So you have to get and buy those hyperspace weapons. All right. So I would need to go f figure out how to make some missiles. Yeah, actually, you would go to, let's talk about that real quick since you've got this up. Go into your labor settings. Okay. And you would want to go to armaments. So go to, take your mouse over armaments and then slide it to the right. Come out into the right hand box and go put three dots into the missiles. There you go. Now, your your arms factory will start building missiles. Okay? And you've got uh, 200 workers in there, but you can have up to 4%. So I would crank that up to 4% in there. So you got more workers building missiles for you. There you go. All right. So how do I see what their progress is on those missiles? And... Probably in an hour or two, you'll have a couple of missiles. Oh, an hour in yeah. real time. <laughs> is it, oh, yeah. They, this is no instant. Yeah, it's not instant. <laughs> so, this is long-term revenge. This is a well, revenge for very it, cold. <laughs> it's it's a four-week game, so you have plenty of time for revenge. That's not a problem. Thank Lots of time for revenge. Well, still, that, that's but, a lot of fun we got into combat. It's pretty intense. Yeah, now, I can only again, imagine if you had spent hours building some missiles and all that kind of stuff, how uh, how yes. intense that combat has to be at that point. If I'm yeah, because missiles, I mean, you've lost hours of of work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and and the thing about ships, though, um, ships can be built very quickly. So you're not taking months to build ships. You basically is 
you came into the game, it built a ship for you. So you're building ships quickly. It's not months worth of work that's destroyed. So there's there's a balance of all of that also at the same time. So and here again, this is a multiplayer game. We've had combat like this last for hours. If that was your base and this is the last day of the war, you have to defend that base. So you get your team in. We'll have 30 or 40 players in here flying combat, destroying each other, trying to get this planet. Because this planet could change the balance of the war and let your team win and the other team lose. But if you lost it, they would win and you would lose. So there's a... My, you're shooting at me. I'm talking to you. Also, how do I get fair. my shit back on the screen here? Laser lock detected. Oh, did you... Oh, you went to the planet. There's still a bug. I'm trying to get that. There's a bug with that. Can we go back to the planet maybe? And... No, you have to exit out and come back in. That's the only way to do it right now. So you'd have to exit out and come ah. back in totally. Sorry. But your ship is shooting at me. I can see your ship. Mysteries. You just can't see Laser lock detected. Mysteries yeah. of space. Yeah. This is what happens in Star Trek all the time, right? They come across these uh, cloaking devices, anomalies. Yes. <laughs> yes. Captain, yeah, there's a cloak. strange anomaly. Our ship has disappeared. We can't see our ship. Okay. All right. So we'll have to. I'll, I should get that fixed. Hopefully this week, sometime. But uh, and that's where we are in the development cycle. We're getting ready to do our demo. So. The uh, video, the demo video should be uh, started this week. We're going to start a script for it. Hopefully, we'll have it finished in about a week or two at that point. Then we're going to start um, uh, talking to some publishers. We may go to FIG and do a crowdfunding campaign through them and allow people to invest in the game. So we've got a couple of options that we're looking at right now. So we're trying to, like, like, like we're doing right now, we've got several players testing and reporting bugs. And that is one. If you go to your plant, you come back out, your ship's invisible. So we need to figure out what is causing that. But uh, yeah, that's, that's where we a are. Lot more with the working game. than not working. That's for sure. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> and 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 a, and a ship. Your ship is actually there. You just can't see it. So it's a visibility issue. So I need to trace through the code and say the ship as it comes in. Let's make sure it's visible that, so the player can see their ship. So. But uh, well, thanks for showing me this, David. I think there'll be a lot of excited people uh, watching yeah, the video Matt, I, that'll want to jump into this when it's. Uh... Yeah, and 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 right now it's open for people to come in. So if you've got people that want to come in, um, I like for them to register in the forum so we can you know start a discussion with them and that kind of thing. But uh, the the game is open for people to come and play. We have a, uh, a fairly open pricing plan set up at this point um, the guest server will be available so if someone just wants to come in and try the game even after we've we, we've launched there'll be a guest server that will be available and you can play on that stores won't accumulate you won't be able to collect any titles um, that kind of thing but people will be play be able to play for free uh, wars you'll kind of be able to play a, a, a price for it or if you're a hardcore player, you can pay a price and, and, and get a, a one-year unlimited plan so you can play any war. Um, we're hoping that we'll have war starting every Friday night. So that way there's a lot of flexibility. Certainly a lot to dig into here, man. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we could just spend a, probably a whole day just setting up planets and stuff like that right before. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Here again, it's a four-week-long war, so people are collecting planets, trading planets, upgrading planets. You come along, you find somebody. You somebody hasn't been on for a week, and they haven't collected their taxes. So you bust that planet, you attack that planet, and there's a ton of taxes there. So then you take that those taxes, and then you go bust other ones, and you look for that person's planets, right? Because if he hasn't been on in a week, there's a lot of taxes on all eight of his planets. So you could steal other people's taxes. Yeah. So then those taxes buy fighters, and then you go buy with that that money. You go bust other bases, and it it, it can you know parlay into chain. You you could end up at the end of a couple of days with eight new planets that you didn't even start the war with. Just a way to upgrade. Wow, I'm just amazed at all the stuff you can do in this. <laughs> 
Wow, I just know this must have... The, the level of work this represents. I mean, it's, it's incredible. It's about eight years. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, so thanks it's a again, time. David, for showing us this. Uh, hopefully get some players for you. And uh, you guys, if you are playing, let me know. I'd like yeah. to jump in here next time we have a... Every four weeks, I guess, we start from scratch, so... Yes. And the actual first war starts October 27th at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard. So at that point, everybody's starting with a clean slate. Um, there's there's academies to come in and learn, uh, like the combat that you and I did. You could go into one of the single-player academies, get better at combat, playing against some NPCs. You attack their planets. You take the planet from that. Actually, you come in, you kill the NPC, you then... Um, uh, occupy his planet that planet then upgrades your ship you go find another one and you do that and and uh, there's several levels to play in that so you get pretty good at just practicing against NPCs so That's great bringing in some fresh players like me and <laughs> learning play against you veterans that have been playing That's right there you go 30 years or but here again, Mega Wars is the type of game to where you're playing against veterans, but everybody starts exactly the same on reset night. There are no advantages except the knowledge and skill that each player learns. As it should be. That's right. That's as it should be. So well, thanks again. I'm gonna Thanks, Matt. <laughs> shut it down. Hopefully get this video up soon so we <laughs> people can see what all the fuss is about. Very good. I'll Thanks, see Matt. See you on the other side here. All right. Bye. And that's all for this week's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, hopefully, be back next week. Might be a couple of weeks. We're kind of in the crunch time here at St. Cloud State as we uh, wind down the semester. So, I can't make any promises, but uh, hopefully, soon I'll be able to get a new uh, review episode posted and start lining up some uh, more interviews for the next uh, season, if you will, of Matt Chat. As always, I want to thank you very, very, very much. I depend entirely on people, uh, good people just like yourself, to keep these shows in production. Uh, so if you like Matt Chat, you want to see more episodes, uh, if you haven't, and you haven't done so already, uh, just go to that link in the show notes. Uh, there's a couple of links there. You can go to the Patreon site. All I ask is a buck a show to keep these in production. Uh, you can also support the show by buying the books. Uh, go to mattchat.us, uh, buy games on GOG through the affiliate links. There's lots of ways you can help out. And uh, however you help the show, I really appreciate it. So thank you. All right, so what about that news for the Matt Cave? We got a couple of news items here from Stig. Uh, first is uh, some sad news. Runic Games, uh, these are the developers of the Torchlight series, Torchlight 1 and 2, uh, really good action RPGs. Uh, well, anyway, they're, it's very sad to say they are closing down after nine years and three successful games. Uh, they are looking, uh, trying to relocate their people, they call them their family. Uh, so if you do know, if you maybe you uh, run a studio or you know a studio looking for people, uh, you can have uh, you can email them at jobs at runicgames.com. That's jobs at runicgames.com, and let them know. Maybe we can help uh, relocate some of these folks. Uh, uh, so <laughs> it doesn't end that tragically. Of course, it is a uh, really sad, especially for fans of the Torchlight series. Second news item is about Rogue Quest, the Vault of the Lost Tyrant. Uh, this is a retro art style uh, adventure game that requires absolutely no pixel hunting. It's only four bucks on Steam. Uh, go check it out. It's about Cassandra Neck, a crossbow wielding adventuress. Uh, she is uh, part of the Rogues Guild, uh, which gathers adventurers and treasure hunters, the most skilled, bravest, and resourceful. And uh, they're hunting for treasure belonging to a long-forgotten warlord known as the Sea Tyrant. Anyway, it looks really good, and how can you go wrong for four bucks? <laughs> you know, I, I think it'd be well worth that uh, just to try it out. So, anyway, check it out. I'll post a link to that. Uh, there's also a couple other interesting things I noticed on Steam I thought I'd call your attention to. Uh, one is, has really got my, caught my eye. It's called Cog Mind. 
Uh, this is a, a sci-fi roguelike with the ASCII-style graphics, but the, the twist is it's not just ASCII, it's what they're calling ASCII Evolved graphics. So it's the, uh, quote, most advanced terminal interface ever with particle effects and other special effects. Uh, so you play this robot and you're building yourself out of components that you find or you salvage uh, from other robots. Anyway, this thing looks really awesome. It's a $19.99 on Steam, so go check out Cog Mind. It's in early access. And then finally, uh, I know a lot of you guys are fans of the uh, Dungeons series. Uh, a couple weeks ago, Dungeons 3 rolled out. Uh, this is being described as a fully reworked dungeon manager. Uh, oh, it's a dungeon manager with a fully reworked overworld real-time strategy or RTS mode. And they brought back the ever-popular ever dungeon narrator. So it's got an extensive single-player campaign, 20 missions, more than 20 hours of playtime, random levels, a new co-op mode for two players. And that's, that's the part that most interests me. I think it'd be a lot of fun uh, to play in this uh, co-op mode. Uh, it's uh, by Realmforge Studios, and it's $39.99 on Steam. So anyway, let me know if you try it out, if you already have it. I'd love to hear your thoughts on Dungeons 3 as well as Cogmind. And, a rogue quest, so <laughs> hopefully that'll uh, be enough games to, to keep you busy until ne the next episode. All right, so let's wrap it up with a quotation. And I found a quotation I liked. Um, you know, we just had Halloween, so everybody was dressed up in costumes, right? And uh, I'd love to see your Halloween costumes if you have them. Uh, but anyway, this quote is from Margaret, uh, Margaret Atwood. It goes something like this. Another belief of mine is that everyone else my age is an adult whereas I am merely in disguise. I think we can all relate to that. And so I hope you enjoyed that, and see you guys next week.